Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Ooh, pack one, pick one. What a nice one. Terror of the Peaks. So this is going to be at its best in probably red-green, where we've got a bit of ramp, like with a visionary. But any red deck is going to be happy with a dragon. Can maybe wheel like a sure strike or a crash. And yeah, Scorching Dragonfire seems like the perfect follow-up. Probably just the best card in the pack anyway, and it is on color, so no reason to deviate. Third pick. Now the red cards aren't great. Ogre is fine, but replaceable. I am a fan of Pestilent Haze. There's a lot of aggressive decks where this lines up pretty well. So we could potentially go red-black with Haze and make it a nice controlling deck. Yeah, sure. Now we're seeing a few decent blue cards. Temple's always decent. Like, if we end up blue-red, it's fine, but even without... Blue in our deck, it's a tap land that lets us cry one, which is still totally fine. Could just cut off red and take the ogre. No black cards in the pack, so that's not a good sign. Although we did get past the rare snake in the pack where we took the dragonfire, so... I think it's between temple, ogre, and the best blue card probably captures fear for the deck we're trying to build. I'll just take a temple. Magmut's a pretty good 2-drop, so I'm happy to have that one. A card like Rise again also definitely gets better if we have a bomb like Terror of the Peaks in our deck. Another Magmut. Second inventory passing us in the meantime. But uh, yeah, I mean, inventory is one of those cards that can be amazing if you get three or four of them. But sometimes you pick one early and never see a second copy, and it's kind of a wasted pick. So it is definitely a high variance card in that sense. I'll take my Ogre now. Not a huge fan of Sanctum. Don't think we're trying to draft a Sanctum deck. Nothing wrong with the Bone Pit Brute. It does get better if we have a few evasive creatures, so probably at its best in blue-red. If we've got some small flyers or in red-white with a Pegasus as another cheap flyer. Yeah, could also take the Crag in case we end up red-white. Can probably pick up more Bone Pit Brutes later. Arcanist could be fine, although we don't have many non-creature spells at the moment. We seem to be more aggressively slanted. Caged Zombie also an option. I'll take the Brutes. And we did wheel Sure Strike, as well as Crash, so there don't seem to be a ton of red drafters, which is a good sign. Thrill is totally fine too, or I could take the Rise again to maybe reanimate some of our bigger creatures. Although Thrill would also go well alongside Rise again, since we can discard a big creature and then reanimate it. I'll take a Rise again. Another Ogre. Wow, inventory wheeled all the way. Maybe I can take a backwater and end up splashing one of the three Grixis colors, we'll see. Although the protege would have been fine too. So red seemed pretty open, we wheeled most of the ogres and we didn't see many other red cards. Well, we could go red-white and take this Houndmaster. Although it's not like white was particularly open. Could take the Mirror as a fine ramp card, Passage for fixing. Although I don't have anything that I really want to splash at the moment. Can take a Sphere and just end up blue-red. But I do think the power level on Houndmaster is better. And we do potentially have a decent setup for an aggressive red-white deck. With Sure Strike, a couple Magmuts. Yeah, I think it's worth at least speculating 
I'm not giving up on much by doing that. Weird can be better than Magmut, but it kind of depends on the deck. In red-white, for instance, the weird's not going to be amazing, but in blue-red it's definitely at its best. Can just take another Magmut, the card's quite good. Yeah, I mean, the Magmut's going to be great no matter what. The weird's only going to be great if we end up blue-red, I think. Could still be serviceable in black-red, since we have Pestilent Haze and Rise again to trigger it. Well, we've got options. Grasp of Darkness jumps out as a nice removal spell, so we could end up black-red anyway. There's a Punisher as another expensive creature, and maybe we can try and work some sort of reanimator angle with Rise again, maybe try and get some of those uh, discard effects. And then there's also a second inventory to go with our first one. I think I'm just taking the Grasp and then try and make black-red work. Can maybe splash blue if we pick up some great blue card with Backwater and Temple. Hope to get to a Spellgorger Weirds now, since we've got a decent amount of ways to enable it. Well, there's a Watchdog and Savior, which would have been nice for a Red-White. Could just take another inventory. Maybe we end up Black Rat splashing for a bunch of inventories. Who knows? Didn't think I need a second Brute. Yeah, I think the red-white plan has sailed at this point. Spellgorger Weird is looking better. There's Finishing Blow, which is expensive removal, but you're still happy to have one or two of them. I mean, Weird potentially has the most upside. Since we don't have any 3-drop creatures yet, it works well with a lot of our uh, non-creature spells here that we're planning to play. Yeah, I think Weird might be better than the finishing blow here. And we're not 100% sure what our color situation is besides that we're playing red. If I get a Punisher on the wheel, I could definitely play it, but I'm not going to take it now. Yeah, you know, we could just work kind of this reanimator angle. We've got the backwater and the temple for fixing. So it might not be the worst idea. And then hope to wheel some of these Megalodons. I do wish we can get a Thrill of Possibility, too. Not a Grasp. So we do have to be a red-black splashing blue, since we can't really splash all these double black cards. Another Magmut. Meteorite could also help us ramp and fix. So that's a consideration in this deck. Or I can just keep taking Magmuts or Zombies. Maybe this is a Meteorite deck. Haven't played a card before, but if we're looking for a deck that potentially plays some 6 and 7 mana creatures and that's trying to play 3 colors, I could see it being okay. Maybe play Village Rides. Ooh, wow, we wield the Spellgorger Weird, that's a gift. Another Brute. Don't think I need double rights. And a Backwater, so we've got quite a bit of fixing already here. Did not wheel another inventory, and we didn't get any of those Hellkite Punishers. So someone is drafting a rampy red deck, perhaps. Last pack. Stormwing Entity is nice, but it's kind of awkward on the splash. So I'm just gonna have to take the Dragonfire, which is still totally fine here. Well, the Standard Bear seems fine. Can pretty easily replace itself at least and draw a card. So Ghost Light, not really something I can splash since it's double blue. But a Capture Sphere, I potentially can. Seems better than the other options, like Wizardry could be okay since we have a double Spellgorger Weird. But we don't really seem to be closing out the game with a bunch of prowess creatures necessarily. Mm, 
Gormants could be nice. We've got a lot of cheap creatures we can sacrifice to it. Not the best combo with Capture Sphere, since they can just sag the creature underneath the Capture Sphere instead. Uh, Warmonger, fine 3-drop. Third Inventory would be nice too, and then there's a Backwater. I think I'm just taking the Inventory. Like, two Inventory is not really worth it, but as soon as we have a third copy, they become quite good. And we've got the Fixing, we might even wheel another Backwater for them. Alright, I'll take the Punisher now. We do seem to be a pretty controlling deck, so if we can get to 7 mana, Punisher is going to be a nice way to close out the game, plus we can potentially reanimate it with Stitcher or Rise again if we find a way to discard it. It's got to be the Caves. Yeah, Double Vision seems a bit clunky here, even though it does potentially work well with our removal spells. It's just a little bit slow. And the mana base is greedy enough. There's a Megalodon. Another Magmut. The Mirror would be nice for ramp. Don't think we're getting another reanimation spell. So it's purely there to combo with the Stitcher. Or if we happen to just have two blue mana in the late game. So it's not amazing. Maybe I prefer the Mirror. We do have some pretty expensive cards in the deck. Sky Scanner seems fine. Maybe Gloom Sower. Another Meteorite? Are we doing it? Maybe. I mean, it is an expensive card, but we do have some cards worth ramping into. And the fact that the format is aggressive means that you can usually kill something with it, since there's going to be a bunch of small creatures in play. Take a Caged Zombie. Pretty late Gale Swooper too. And we wield the Backwater, so pretty happy with that. It's a pretty strange deck. Typically draft all these two-color decks and we ended up with a pretty interesting three-color pile. But I think our deck's gonna be okay. So don't think we're a Village Rights deck necessarily. Uh, not gonna play the Sure Strike. But in terms of removal, we've got Double Grasp, Double Dragonfire, Haze, Capture Sphere, and then Double Meteorite potentially. Happy with the Rise again. I uh, can maybe cut one Brute, play Sower, Punisher, Brute, and Tower of the Peaks as kind of our curve toppers. And then the Triple Inventory on the Splash is a bit of a weird one. But I think I've got the mana base to uh, make it work. And then Magmut can just trade off early on and can maybe ping the opponent for a bit. Standard Bear is fine, the Weird seem good, Stitcher's nice, Mirror can ramp, Caged Zombie is probably our weakest three, followed by Sky Scanner. Can maybe shave one Meteorite. So this is 42. So what else are we cutting? I guess I don't have a ton of evasive creatures to combo with the Bone Pit Brute, so maybe that can go and we'll just play Gloom Sower Hellkite as our top ends. At which point do I still need Meteorites? I still don't hate it. We also have a lot of card draws, so additional mana can be useful. Can cut one turret ogre perhaps. We've got enough removal to deal with flying creatures that we shouldn't need all the reach, plus some of our Wing Conditions have Flying too. Well, let's cut the Ogre. Pestilent Haze isn't great with the Magmuts, but we're hoping to just trade these off early, and it is fine with the Weird since it's going to pick up a plus one counter before the minus two minus two. I guess the Mirror also dies to it, but we don't have to play the Haze if it doesn't line up well. It's just nice to have the option in some matchups if the opponent curves out. I'll keep the Magmut just to have enough 2-drops, because Grasp of Darkness doesn't really count as a 2-drop, and Inventory is on the splash, so we don't always expect to have blue mana on turn 2. And then the Mana Base. So I'm essentially splashing blue for a triple Inventory, Sphere, and Stitcher. So 4 or 5 blue sources at the very least. 
So I could maybe get away with one island, three backwaters, a temple, and a meteorite also fixes for blue. Seems enough. And then I have eight reds, eight black. I do need double black for grasp and for haze. But generally speaking, we have more red cards. I'll probably still add a swamp. So we've got nine black, eight reds, five blue plus a meteorite. Yeah, that seems okay. A meteor shower. It's not a bad name actually for a deck splashing blue. Nice hand. Don't have double black yet, so I'll bottom that. Try and play the weirds before we dragon fire. Ooh, Sanctum. That's gonna put a clock on us. Just double checking. Yeah, it's on the bottom too. Ooh, Patrician. Probably just play another weird now. Hope to draw a swamp. Nice. Now they could have Feet of Resistance, but I guess we'll find out. Probably kill the zombie since they only have the one black mana, so keeping up Death Touch is a pretty big cost and then we can end up killing the Imp anyway. Could also play Ogre and just trade. Or Capture Sphere, I guess. Use up all my mana. And then next turn I can Stitcher plus maybe Dragonfire. They could easily have a creature that doesn't die to Dragonfire that I can deal with using Capture Sphere. But mana efficiency definitely matters. Another play we could have made is attack and then make them use the death touch ability on him before using dragon fire in case they have another removal spell like finishing blow. But if they don't, we end up uh, losing out on 5 damage. This is gonna be great. I guess I should have exiled the Impure. That was a mistake. Although I don't think it's gonna matter too much. Alright, sweet. Well, we certainly have a few dragons. Yeah, I'll keep.
try and set up a situation where the weird trades and we draw a card with the standard bear. Could also save the turret ogre to play after terror to deal for damage somewhere, but the standard bear still works. So I think I'm happy enough curving out. So trading means that another Hunter's Edge won't be able to deal with Terror of the Peaks. So it might be worth it here. <laughs> Alright then. I guess they didn't have an answer. Looks good. Scry towards another land, preferably an untapped one. I think the meteorite's gonna be good this game. Can ramp us towards Punisher. I guess I can play backwater now. And keep the land, because if I draw another land next turn, I don't necessarily need to scry towards another one. Ooh. All right, we've got double grasp of darkness as potential answers. So those are going to be important. All right. We drew the wrong removal spells. Swamp. I need double black before I can cast a Grasp of Darkness. And I guess I don't mind land 5. Sure. Yeah, I'll probably use a dragon fire so they have to tap it down so we don't take damage. Yeah, the meter also gives me double black, but it's not quite the same here. In case we draw the grasp. Could have also kept Ogre in hand to then play after Terror of the Peaks. But I also don't want to take damage for free from the Pride Malkin. So we'll see. Glorious Anthem. I guess I'm trading. Out of range from Grasp of Darkness, more importantly. So my one out is not even an out anymore. Yeah, this is going to be pretty tricky to deal with. We do have one Capture Sphere, that's not our out. So that's what we're draw trying to draw towards now. No, Dragonfire doesn't lower toughness, even though it shows it on the creature. It just marks 3 damage on it, but it's still 5 toughness. So, Dragonfire plus Grasp doesn't do it. It would just be a 3-1 with 3 damage on it, but it's still indestructible. 
Yeah, Irina displays it a bit confusingly. <laughs> Alright. Really going all in. Well, I do have to chump now. And I guess it even tramples thanks to the Pride Malkin. So yeah, I need Capture Sphere now, basically. That's no Capture Sphere. I have 6 mana. Doesn't cast any of my 7 drops. So I think we're dead. I mean, I guess I can kill the Pride Malkin and then chump block the Hallow Blade. But it's not gonna be pretty. Yeah, I didn't put a Terror of the Peaks in my deck to chump block. But I guess we've got to do what we've got to do. So now I need to top deck Capture Sphere. Doesn't even die to the dragon fire, so even capture sphere doesn't do it anymore. I guess if I play sower, I can chum block the blade, gain two. Oh no, it's only when it becomes blocked, so that doesn't work. Yeah, I don't think we have any outs. Yeah, our deck had a couple answers for indestructible Hallow Blades, but they were able to put enough auras on it where even those few outs got reduced. GG's. There's a capture sphere we needed. This sounds okay. Some pretty nice ramp with mirror into meteorites potentially. Ooh, and there's a ramp payoff. Although they do seem to have some interaction. Give us a nice juicy target for meteorites. That works. Uh, yeah, I can't attack here. Turn 5 Hellkite Punisher. Don't mind if I do. The Shock Rock, that's a nice nickname. No attacks. They might have a Sure Strike that they're gonna try and use defensively. So I could just capture Fear preemptively. Let's see, how much mana do I have? 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Probably keep land in hand to discard to the Stitcher. Play Stitcher and still pump Punisher once.
playing Sphere after they play Strike doesn't work because the creature is already going to be blocking, so I still lose the Punisher in that case. Well, they might be trying to set up the Sure Strike play again. Let's see if the Stitcher can maybe do something about it, or I can just let the trade happen and then use the Stitcher's second ability to reanimate it. But with two lands in hand, it is tempting to just discard some lands. Although, let's see. Yeah, I guess if the Punisher trades for Sure Strike, I can sack Stitcher to get it back and then still play Standard Bear and draw two. So that's not actually too bad here. All right, let's do it. So we're gonna see a block and a sure strike. Could also be a scorching dragon fire, which would be at least in that case we kill the ogre, but then we don't get to reanimate the punisher, so that would be unfortunate. Best case scenario, I guess, is they just have a shock. Uh, it is a sure strike. That's fine. So we'll sack Stitcher. Gotta make sure I keep up the right mana. Play standard bearer. Alright, those are some good ones. And the Hobble Fiend, so now I can attack. And if they double block, I can grasp one of them. Yeah, it still seems like the play. And send in the Standard Bearer to trade for the Hobble Fiends. Pass the turn. All right, sweet. Halkite Punisher goes a distance. Fine hands. Got a double black for grasp. So turn two I can just play Magmut. Unless there's something I need to grasp right away we can play two backwaters. But most likely just go mountain into Magmut. Larsonists can be annoying. Hopefully they can't get rid of my magma here. A Gale Swooper would be a nice one, for instance. Alright, so the Meteorite is going to be good here this game. In the meantime... Probably no real reason to keep up Capture Sphere. So I'll pass. And I'll probably take a bit of damage and then keep the Grasp for end of turn. Oh yes. And then untap a meteorite uh, singer, hopefully. The fact that they play land afterwards could mean that they don't have a feat of resistance in hand, which is good to know. 
Now they could enable prowess at instant speed here if they have uh, one or two mana instants. So we're not guaranteed to kill the singer with the meteorite, so I could actually just play the weird. So it picks up a counter after we play the meteorites. That seems fine. Get in for two. A wish coin crab, okay. We found a potential target for capture sphere. Now the meteorite is much more likely to kill the singer. Although I could still capture sphere the crab first. And get in for five. That is a lot of damage. Now we are flooding a little bit here. Ooh, Terror of the Peaks. I'm not opposed to trying to kill the Watchdog with the Meteorites. In case they were trying to set up some combo trick to kill my blockers or to prevent the trade for the Magmut. Or I can just slam down Terror of the Peaks. If they're keeping up Cancel, I would rather bait out with uh, Meteorites. Even if they don't seem like a Cancel deck. I would like the Auto Tamper to keep up a red mana just so we represent more potential instants. A lofty Denial, alright. So happy we played it this way. Still get a counter on the weird. I'll probably take the trade for the watchdog. Or do I? I guess I don't have the option. So if the Terror of the Peaks resolves and doesn't get removed, it does hold off all these small flyers. They might even be forced to play defense here. Alright, never mind. That's a lot of damage. The Watchdog, of course, has Vigilance. Although once the Prowess wears off, the Singer's gonna be back down to a 3-3. And inventory is potentially pretty nice. Probably want to hold it and attack first. Most of my non-creature spells are instants, so if they don't block, I could potentially still win if I draw an instance with inventory. But if they block, I would rather keep this hidden, so we maybe get to kill the Watchdog for free. I guess the Magma also finishes them off if they take five. So I will attack. If they block, that's good. If they don't block, that's good. So... Not a bad place to be. And next turn Turret Ogre can deal 4 to them, which is pretty much game. Probably play my land first in case of a lofty denial. Since we have to pay four additional mana. All right, sweet. Massacre Worm, not bad. We 
we're on the play with a pretty slow hand. If we had a way of discarding the Punisher, it would be a bit more exciting. But we do have a lot of removal, at least my mana will be okay. I think I still keep... The life gain from Backwater is also not negligible. Alright, Dragonfire is a nice pickup. A red green. I'm just gonna pass a turn. We're not an aggro deck that tries to force damage through, so we don't need to Dragonfire the Spider here. It's not the most threatening card. Plus, if they try and attempt something strange like uh, the fight spell, we can blow them out with the Dragonfire. Alright, Battle Rattle. I guess I will kill before it triggers, so I'll go full control just to make sure. Yeah, that seems fine. Right, more removal. Now I can attack. And we're not too far from casting Hellkite Punisher. And at 6 toughness it survives a lot of removal in red-green, although my opponent's splashing black, so they might be splashing for a finishing blow. Yeah, tapping down Avenger seems fine. They'll still be able to use the activated ability for 8 mana. But that's fine by me. Alright, that's a good one. Although it doesn't have reach, so we can still fly over with our dragon. And then having rise again to reanimate our dragon if they do somehow answer it is pretty nice too. Arada, nice. It's interesting if they attack with the warden. I do kill them in two attacks with the Punisher, so having to spend a turn reanimating it is maybe not what I want to be doing. Plus if they have a Scorching Dragonfire to finish off Punisher, they could exile it as well. Uh, it doesn't seem like they're going to be attacking. Ooh, Terror of the Peaks. I guess I could attack first. Not that it matters all that much. Ah, put on chumps. And next turn they're just dead to my two dragons attacking. Do have to keep Rana's ability mines too here. Take five. A Rada I can block with the weird. And if they use a trick to save Rada. Presumably they're just dead to the dragons. All 
And our opponent explodes. Alright, there's my frantic inventory. A lack of red mana. And we do have a double red card in hand. I think I can still get away with this. If we draw any additional inventories, that's great. If we draw red mana, that's great. If we draw any untapped land and play mirror, we can still generate quite a bit of mana. Even if it's not the right one. Uh-oh, here we go again. I need my Grasp of Darkness. Although this time I guess we have Capture Sphere. So it's not too bad. Alright, well we've got double red now, so that's nice. A few ways we can play this. Could play the weird first, so it picks up a counter if we sphere. I don't hate just using Capture Sphere and then keeping all the creatures until post Terror of the Peaks. Or I could play the Mirror to make sure I have enough mana to play the Terror of the Peaks next turn. I would have 6 mana. So even if I draw land, it's not enough to play Terror and something else. Could also main phase a Sphere here to play around Feet of Resistance. If they have Feet, the Sphere would still fall off, but I prevent one attack step. Which might be worth it, although they could also end up using some other enchantment on the Hallow Blade. Although I guess it's unlikely into 4 open mana. Uh, let's just play it safe. Our late game looks good. So we just need to make sure we don't take any unnecessary damage. Alright, looks like we're gonna get to untap with our dragon. And probably play... I guess I don't hate playing the mirror, so we have more mana for next turn. Still get to kill either one of their creatures. Kill the Watchdog, I think. Or I can just take the two from Watchdog and kill the highest power creature here. Because I probably attack with a dragon, although if I attack they could kill it with the destroy tapped creature. So maybe I don't even take that risk. I don't really see how I lose if the dragon survives. Opponent passes. So, could just play the Punisher. And just go face. Sure. And then now I can probably attack with Terror of the Peaks, or I can pass and make them waste their turn. And next turn attack with both. Play around swift response. Sure. And then maybe draw some cards with the standard bearer. Try and get as much value from the Terror of the Peaks as possible. Just go face. And I'll attack with both now. They have to response the terror of, or the the Punisher, otherwise they die, and they take five down to one. All right. Well, we played around this uh, specific removal spell, and I think it paid off. All 
Are they gonna discard their entire hand? Some nice five drops. Hallow Blade's a nice way to enable Idol of Endurance here. <laughs> nice one. It's a stylish way to end the game. Props to our opponents. All right, six and one. The one lost to the Hallow Blade with a bunch of dubs on it. All right, on the play, no black, but we can play Magma and Dragonfire. Epiphany helps us cry towards black mana. I don't hate it. So that works out. Can play Backwater Keep up Dragonfire. The drain's going down. Ooh, Palladium Mirror is nice. Especially when we have two seven drops in hand. Don't mind trading for Magmuts. And then we can play Ogre. If we draw land, so we can play our seven drops next turn. Otherwise, we can maybe put our Grasp of Darkness to use. Ah, should have been more specific about an untapped land. Uh, do I want to grasp the battalion? I'm okay just trading for the ogre, to be honest. So how about I just attack with ogre, see what happens. Attacking with Magma doesn't make a ton of sense since they could just block with a spinner, so I'm better off activating it for one damage. I guess I would rather make them exile the spinner and kill the angel. Alright, which 7 drop do we want to play first? Punisher kills them in 2 attacks essentially. So probably that one. Could have kept a land in hand too. Although next turn I'll be able to play Gloom Sower and Pump Punisher. Fair enough. If they have another answer, then we could be in trouble. Now I can just attack with the mirror and play Gloom Sower. Scavenging ooze, not bad. There's a lot of food in the graveyards. Alright, inventory also gets affected by scavenging ooze. Although they probably have other priorities at the moment. That's ah, a good answer. And 
Flash unblocking Gloom Sower. Not the best solution. Sweet. All right. So our uh, weird three-color dragon deck managed to go the distance. So even some unconventional decks can get there. Of course, having a Mythic Rare in the deck doesn't hurt. It didn't cast many frantic inventories, but it's a nice way to refuel complements or removal package nicely. Double Grasp, Double Dragonfire did a ton of work. Didn't cast the Haze much, but plenty of situations where it would have been quite good. Sphere, don't think we cast or rise again, but a few situations where it could have been good. Meteorite was okay. The Weirds definitely did a lot of heavy lifting too. And then the Seven Drops and the Terror of the Peaks. And then having a lot of dual lands, of course, pretty big part of why we went three colors. Let's crack some packs. Arada, great card. I think I've yet to play her in Limited, but even has some constructed applications. Scavenging Ooze, another great one. I think that would be my pick here over the Gaggle Master, although both are great. Another Ooze. We're maybe slowly completing the entire set. Speaker of the Heavens. Definitely take the Hallow Blade over it. It's not a particularly great card. Takes a lot of work to get those angels going, but it's not impossible. One opponent managed to do it against us today and we did not win that game. The Sovereign, nothing special. Don't even think it's better than Gale Swooper. A lot of cards that are close in power level here. The Elder can be quite good in the blue-red decks. Freebooter is always fine. Singer's also decent in any blue deck. Swooper's great in any white deck. Sovereign's like just okay. Not too many cats, but there's a few of them. Pride Malkin comes to mind. And last pack, Baron. Yeah, not a pretty decent pack. Both of the white and commons are great. At least on the same level as Baron. But Baron can be quite good too, especially in like a blue-red tempo deck where you try and aggro people out. And there's some situations where you can bounce your own creature for value if it has a powerful ETB effect, and then you get to draw some additional cards as well. So you can justify all three of these. All right, sweet. That was a fun draft. So that's going to do it for me today. I want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.